What if the Sykes-Picot Agreement never happened? The Sykes-Picot Agreement was a secret treaty between the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland and French Third Republic signed by Mark Sykes and François-Georges Picot in May 1916 during the First World War. It divided the Middle East into a French sphere in Syria and a British sphere in Palestine and Mesopotamia in an eventual partition of the Ottoman Empire who joined the Central Powers. But between July 1915 and March 1916 the United Kingdom represented by Henry McMahon and Arabs represented by Sharif of Mecca Hussein bin Ali al-Hashimi held the McMahon Hussein correspondence that promised UK supporting an independent Arab kingdom in the Middle East in exchange for an Arab revolt. The revolt broke out in 1916 and the Arabs managed to push the Ottomans out of Hejaz and together with the British advance into Syria by 1918. The British favorized the Sykes-Picot Agreement and French and Lebanon became French colonies, while Palestine, Transjordan and Iraq became British colonies. The Sharif fate only got Hejaz. On top of that his biggest rival Abdelaziz ibn al-Saud, king of Nejdi and Hissa managed to unite most of the Arabian Peninsula and invaded Hejaz in 1924 and conquered it by 1925 founding the Kingdom of Nejdi and Hejaz which got renamed in 1932 to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Meanwhile in 1921 the British were unable to hold their new colonies, and so made them puppet monarchies. The Emirate of Trabzon Jordan and Kingdom of Iraq were led by the sons of Hussein ibn Ali with the former still being led by his descendants. The next year Egypt is also granted more autonomy. After the Second World War Israel, Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine and Syria got independent, but thanks to the British and French would end up almost constantly at war with each other or themselves with Syria still being in its 11-year-long internal conflict. But what if that didn't happen? What if the Sykes-Picot Agreement never happened? In this timeline the Central Powers are still defeated by the Entente in late 1918 and the Ottoman Empire was forced to sign the Treaty of Severs. Armenia, Greece and Italy still get Eastern Anatolia, East Thrace, Smyrna and Southern Anatolia while France takes Cilicia, Lebanon and the Syrian coastline and UK takes the Marmara region. But the rest of Syria and Iraq. Jordan, Palestine and Hejaz become the Hashemite Kingdom of Arabia or just Hashemite Arabia. The Turkish War of Independence takes place and the Turks still push out Armenia, Greece, France and UK. Arabia joined the war and annexed French Lebanon. In 1924 the Hashimi conquest of Nejdi breaks out with Nejdi being conquered by the Hashemites. It was in this year when Hussein ibn Ali declared himself to be Caliph. The Caliph is the spiritual head of Islam. Hussein I died in 1931 and his eldest son Ali bin Hussein became king as Hussein I. But he died four years later and his son Abd al Ullah got crowned as Abdullah I. A Hashimi Yemeni war would also break out, but with its opponent being far stronger than in our own timeline, Yemen doesn't manage to stay independent and also becomes part of Arabia. In the Second World War Arabia probably stays neutral and the war continues like in our own timeline, but in 1945 they join the war like Saudi Arabia did. They probably still make an alliance with the US based on oil for protection. After the Second World War many Jews would migrate to Arabia who are pressured to welcome them. Palestine becomes an autonomous province, but clashes between Arabs and Jews would still take place. Arabia is closer allied to the United States than the Soviet Union as the Soviets were anti-religious and have a tendency of killing monarchs. Nonetheless Arabia would be part of the non-oligand movement. After Abdullah died in 1981 without a male heir the line of Abdullah becomes the most senior line starting with Hussein II and being followed by Abdullah II. The Arab Spring still takes place and it could either lead to them becoming either a constitutional monarchy if not a republic, or remain an absolute monarchy. Since North Yemen doesn't exist the South probably joins Oman. The Hashemite Kingdom of Arabia is in this timeline the great power in the Middle East but their neighbors Egypt, Turkey and Iran are a threat as they all have historic claims over them. Of them Iran is their biggest rival as one is supported by the US and the other by Russia. Arabia is the biggest producer of oil and is a great power. There is also no civil war in Syria and Yemen. If you liked the episode, leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye.